Welcome to Starfish NDH, a young people's intervention initiative run by North Devon Homes Limited in partnership with the Big Lottery. This project is designed to reach disadvantaged young people in some of Devon's most deprived communities in Barnstable and Ilfcombe. The project aims to increase employability prospects, increase educational attainment and increase general health and well-being amongst socially excluded young people. These young people were destined to be on a journey of disillusionment. Living in families with chaotic lifestyles with few, if any, positive male role models. No job prospects, no ambition, no qualifications and highly likely to become involved in antisocial behaviour and or crime, drugs, alcohol and early parenthood. Three years ago, the project began radically changing these predicted outcomes. The community championed this project in 2009, gaining the first round of funding. In 2012, North Devon Homes enabled the initiative to expand and continue for a further three years by successfully gaining continuation funding from the big lottery reaching communities. Contrary to popular opinion, Rural communities are not immune from the effects and havoc young people can bring to their neighbourhoods, which is often commonly perceived in the media as being an inner city phenomenon. Whilst we do not experience gang cultures, our young people display all the attributes and disillusionment found in journeys to adulthood, exhibited amongst communities plagued with child poverty, social exclusion and a high concentration of worklessness and its top quartile deprivation. North Devon has the highest youth unemployment in the county, with young people from disadvantaged families experience life at home with parents who can be third generation unemployed. Yet these communities ask for the same services, something for their children to do locally to take them off the streets. The project targets the root cause of antisocial behaviour, low educational attainment, lack of self-belief and confidence, lack of established behaviour boundaries, and lack of community engagement. Our response has been to do just that and we currently engage with 300 individual young people aged 8 to 18 years across three traditionally very hard to reach neighbourhoods, a significant proportion. The innovation of this project lies very much with the young people themselves who are central to the service that has evolved, enabling them to articulate what their needs are as a young community and as individuals. Delivering these needs has taken an imaginative partnership working process with the police, the PCT, local college, theatres, schools and local councils and councillors, all of whom endorse the success and depth of engagement achieved. The impact of this project will be felt in these communities for generations to come and our partners tell us in schools young people are less stressed and attaining better grades and whatever we're doing to keep on doing it. The police tell us that crime rates in once notorious areas remain at 58% below where they were before the project began. Partner agencies tell us that they've never been able to work so well with these hard to reach young people. Parents tell us that life at home is better and calmer as the young people have learnt behaviour boundaries. And older people tell us they now see young people in a very different light and are no longer afraid to walk the streets in the presence of large groups of young people. Young people tell us they feel good about themselves that they want to achieve. They look up to older young mentors. They want to be involved in the community and that this project has changed their lives completely. Young people tell us they now feel a valued part of the community. They no longer feel shunned as troublemakers. And young people tell us that they've noticed that they're kinder to each other, accepting of each other, and share activities with each other regardless of age. That they feel that they've created a community of their own, a young community, a community of the future. Since the project began, no young person engaged in the project has left school without a job or a college placement and the attainment levels of the younger ones is increasing, opening doors for their future that in the past never existed for these communities. This is not a short-term fix. 
We are committed as an organisation to the future of our young people and in our sector we believe this is a model of best practice. The project began with the provision of a youth club within the heart of the community and has evolved far beyond those early expectations of giving young people a place to be safe off the streets and experience having fun, learning how to engage with their community and attend school on a regular basis. Whilst all of those values remain, there is now something far greater available, driven by the young people themselves, who have learned that their voice has value but more importantly, how to ask for help. This is demonstrated by the ongoing commitment of partner agencies and of the bid lottery. This commitment has enabled project practitioners and partners to increase the employability skills so that the 10 school leavers to date are employed or in college. It's enabled us to increase perceptions in the wider community with the local paper now carrying regular articles written by our own young people. It's enabled us to tackle chronic low levels of physical fitness through a green gym, with young people enjoying getting fit and understanding how that fitness is making them feel better. It's enabled us to tackle chronically low levels around sexual education with the help of the PCT. It's enabled us to show young people how to eat healthier foods and understand what a balanced diet consists of. It's enabled us to increase self-belief, esteem, confidence and well-being with a very high percentage of the community which is going to be the community of the future. It's enabled us to reduce truancy and increase school attainment levels. It's enabled us to radically change behaviour by instilling boundaries where young people did not even know they existed. It's enabled us to increase world vision and aspiration to enter higher education. More importantly, the young people have brought their own ideas to this project. They've started a social enterprise within the community, helping older or vulnerable people with small chores. They've developed regular fundraising events for the local children's hospice which they visited and had a major impact on how they saw children that were worse off than themselves and to date they've raised over £500 for that children's hospice. The young people have also raised over £1,000 for their own youth clubs doing activities to pay for excursions, sponsored cycle rides, car washing, delivering newsletters they also help as volunteers in the community, in the community vegetable garden. They help volunteer to do tidy ups in the community and litter picks in the community. Outstandingly, they requested the formation of what we now call the Progress Club to assist in increasing school attainment through personalised after school coaching. This idea was started by a 10 year old boy who came to the youth workers and said he wanted to be able to read like his peers could. He's just read his first book from cover to cover and the Progress Club has many opportunities for young people to have help with after school homework, exam prep or any other areas that they feel that they would like to better themselves in and it's usually around maths and English. Watching this, one should not lose sight of the fact that these are not leafy suburbs we're talking about, but some of the hardest to reach communities. These achievements are huge, and the social return on investment far, far outstrips what we are investing at this moment in time. The project has exceeded expectations by tenfold not least by being an attributable factor to the Homes and Communities Agency recognising that as a social landlord we are streets ahead of the game and backing up that statement with financial support for massive regeneration over the next few years in some of these communities. When these young people are adults, 
they will be in a very, very different personal space, community and environment because of the Starfish NDH project. We hope they look back and smile. And to our partners and the big lottery, we say thank you.